So it's, uh, it's a proud honor of mine to introduce um, my good friend, Eric Michaud, McFly, Aesthetics, and actually I totally don't know your name. Huh? <laughs> Equinox, <laughs> okay. Eric has been talking about this dark net and not telling me anything about it for months. So I'm super excited to hear all this. Guys, give them a huge round of applause. Introducing the dark net, Eric Michaud and crew, thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I had a lot of notes. I had 300 index cards. Um, I'm a little very nervous because I did not expect these many people to care about dark nets. And uh, so I'm, I pretty much uh, decided not to use the cards and just uh, give them to the audience. <laughs> and um, okay, so uh, quick show of hands. I want to see everyone's hand right now in the air. Little exercise because it's been a long day so far. No, everyone's hand. Everyone's hair. <laughs> Right, other hand? I know you're not robots now, thank you, put them down. <laughs> I have some questions later for that. Anyway, so, uh, all right, so I've been keeping quiet with this, with McFly, since Har. Uh, this originally started as a, uh, well, actually it started as many things. Um, in the U.S., we have hackerspaces in the last 18 months exploding everywhere. Uh, they've been very established in Europe, and they're growing in Asia and South America and Africa now. Yeah, Africa. And um, a lot of us realized that we weren't able to get together very well on the internet. Uh, we were able to, you know, use outside resources, but nothing that we could call our own. Uh, so uh, just before DEF CON of this year, uh, Cowtown Computer Congress, Pumping Station One, which I'm a member of, and uh, Hack DC, the DC hackerspace, started something called the War Zone. <coughs> And that grew into a perpetual CTF between us. But it was just a little small thing. And then uh, at Har, this, this tall German man came up to me and said, you are Eric Michaud. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I'm sitting by a campfire. And uh, he said, you are doing this war zone. He said, yes, I'm doing Chaos VPN. We'd like to bridge. So I said, OK, let's go with that. So anyway, so uh, let's see what we're going to talk about. This is uh, the shorter overview that I'm covering. Um, who are we? We'll go over in a second, um, and all the other stuff. So anyway, so my name's Eric Michaud. I'm co-founder of Tool US Division, co-founder of HackDC, founder and president of PS1, the Chicago hackerspace. And uh, some of you might know a few of these things called hackerspaces.org. Um, and then we over here, we have aesthetics. Do you have a mic, sir? Hey, does this work? Is, is this uh, work? We're such technophiles. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm Aesthetics. I've been doing a lot of work with NoiseBridge, a hackerspace in San Francisco. But um, even farther back than that, I did a lot of work at The Last Hope. We did this RFID stuff, uh, mixed it with the social network insight. And that gave all of us a lot of insight into security and privacy and a lot of social networking issues. And some of those ideas have led, like, planted the seeds for the things that we're going to be discussing today and led to some of the inspiration for at least my involvement with this. Yeah, and then we have uh, McFly. Um, I'm McFly. I'm currently in Hamburg. I was working over the Chaos VPN as I thought it was a brilliant idea, but only fairly used. And I made up my mind and got some people together to get it working again and to scale it out to connect all the hackerspaces in, well, whatever, wherever they have internet. That's mainly the basic requirement. And then Equinox. Hi. Um, well, we actually are the people that um, tr have tried to do this since quite uh, some long time ago, actually 2002. But we didn't really have the power to, to push everything. So basically, um, I've been invited uh, to tell you about the stuff that um, we have been running but have not been able to, be, to push. So yeah, thank you. No problem. So uh, that's a little bit of who we are. I mean, I know it doesn't look like we have a, what we call dark net experience or building large networks, but you might be surprised. So anyway, remember that exercise I uh, did earlier about the hand raising up and down? I'm going to ask a few questions. Uh, so how many people here are, are still in university? See, you lied. People raise their hands here. <laughs> uh, okay. Who is, who is out of university? Okay. Who's at a hackerspace right now? Or is building one? All right, I would like to see more hands next year. Um, 
Who does chemistry? Hobby, professional, or otherwise? I've talked to some people here. I've been surprised that I've seen some. But any? No? I see a hand over there. Uh, physicists? Uh, ooh, interesting here. It's a security conference, I thought. Okay. Uh, fabricators, people who like to do soldering, uh, working with wood, building things, anything, building a house, I don't care, like playing with dolls, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, I see some hands here. Okay. Who does information security? Wow, I'm surprised, actually. Not as many, but that's good. Okay. Why am I asking about this? Why am I, why am I here? And, and the main point is, what are we really talking about? Because I love double fudge cookies. Uh, some of you might not be aware of what these are, uh, but they're really wonderful delights you can get in America. Maybe here, I don't know. Are those special cookies? <laughs> are we here about long walks in the rain? No hands? Okay. Um, Raiding the Saturn next door with TVB guns? Uh, I heard last year we had 27 banned, especially the open BSD guys. <laughs> with those wonderful jackets. They're like, anyone, you're gone. Uh, all right, no, no. Networks. We're talking about networks. So, all of you here, you all do different things, but very often you work in the same place or same community, or your research works with each other, you're, you're collaborative. The people who do physics, the people who do chemistry, the people who fabricate, the people who build networks, the people who use networks, they all need to talk with each other. In the last 24 months, with hackerspaces and academia and a lot of people in the world, they've been realizing that there's a lot of unused capacity in a lot of resources like hackerspaces, high performance computing, a lot of systems that aren't just being shared. And right now, uh, not just at university, at corporations, but at the low level, people have all this excess capacity. And this has been very interesting to us, and that's why we're talking about this. So the main thing is, what are we still talking about in this dark net? Why do you care? Why should you care about being here right now? I mean, Seriously, again, who finds it hard to talk with friends in any of these communities? Sometimes on the network, you just want to share large files, virtual machines, do CTF stuff, anything. Anyone? No hands? Seriously, none of you like talking to each other. I bet all of you at one point were on IRC. Never. Never. <laughs> okay. So, so none of you do basic research, uh, find your, your connection to anywhere else, like using BitTorrent, HTTP, or other protocols being squeezed by your ISP or anything else? None of you. I see one, two, three, four, more hands. It's like popcorn. <laughs> come on, I see, come on, seriously, none of you really care about where your data goes. It just gets there, right? It's magic. All right, sure. Well, anyway. All right. Wow, hard crowd, hard crowd. So anyway, um, all right, well, uh, for the ones who don't want to play the home game, uh, what we're talking about here is community. I mean, it's great to share all your wonderful things that you have, all your toys, all your, all your code. You have Git, you have SVN, you have SourceForge, and, other, and Google Code, and other resources. Uh, but you also might even have CNC machines, and other devices, laser cutters, uh, hardware, certain things that it's hard to mail. I mean, you can send data, but very often you just can't connect very easily. I mean, you do have Skype, but you don't know where your data is going very often. So those are the things to think about there. Um, on top of that, I'm able to use this software called Keynote. Some of you like it, some of you don't. I'm able to work on this laptop and give this wonderful presentation. Well, I'd like to think it's wonderful. That's by your applause at the end. <laughs> and then who uses what we're doing. Um, but the thing is, all the things, when I said physicists, chemists, fabricators, everyone, all the work you do applies to everybody else. I want you to think about that right now. Just because you do straight physics doesn't mean it applies to the information security person. Oh, but wait, quantum cryptography, that comes from the world of physics. So a lot, just keep that in mind when I talk about this and everyone comes up with their things. So anyway, uh, to sum up, what I'm really going over is that we found, as we just talked about, many people in the world find that you have to do all these individual tools to get together. To, to just sometimes share simple data. I mean, you can do Gmail and all these other resources, but again, it's like it's on their cloud servers, and you don't exactly know how it's working, but it's working wonderfully. It's not a problem, it's a great thing. But sometimes you just want to have the personal touch. Um, yeah, so the main things is, are that we realize when building all these things together is that it's got to be easy, it's got to apply to everybody, and that you don't really have to think about it once it's up. So, I mean, like, I'm talking about pure hyperbole right now, all these wonderful gooey bits that aren't really hard stuff. So I'm going to pass it off to a few people over here, and we're going to get technical. Uh, aesthetics, do you want to get technical right here? Actually, this thing's not working. 
There we go. Oh, there, slide's working. Slide's working. Now you'll figure it out. <laughs> Is this updated with it? Uh, just hit it. Let me back. go back. There you go. Fourth? It's not? Uh, whatever. Go back, yeah. Huh. <laughs> Yay for Max. Let's That's see. Now roll it back. What? Roll it back. Roll it back. Where are we? Oh, wow. This is a, yeah, it's all good. Let's see. Yeah, keep going Stuff back. Keep going back. Is this where? Keep going back. Keep going back. Back? Go back. There you go. Okay. There we go. So you guys all saw. Everybody is awesome. <laughs> Indeed. So there are a few networks involved in this, and uh, they've all taken different forms. Um, They have uh, played a lot of different uh, roles. Uh, some of them show up in. Bleh. I hate this. Do, 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 do. In your work life. Yes, a lot of these show up in your work life. And one of the things we're getting at is you have different types of networks you can have. And a lot of what we know of are centralized. But one of the things we're reaching at is decentralized. So we have three different types of networks we're going over right now DN42, which was actually, if I believe, uh, written by Equinox here. And uh, he's done a lot of work with it. It's been around since, I think, 2002. And it's helped join together all the different spaces that are in Germany to a large extent. And it's part of the inspiration for the project that we've been working on. Past that, we have Chaos VPN, which is what McFly approached us with. And that is more the European, the German link. And Agora is the, the Agora link is the stuff that we're working on in America. So we have a number of goals. This is kind of hard to do because I have to look up there. I can't really see it down here. <laughs> Yeah. So we have a number of goals here. We have privacy, which is a big concern. Everyone is uh, worried about how much of the personal data gets out, who sees it, and whatnot. Community. There's no point in doing this. There's no point in a network unless you connect, connect, uh, connect with other people. There's no point in doing it unless you have ideas that you want to share, unless you want to bridge together and work together on uh, different activities. To be available, if you have a network and people are connected together and it goes down, then there's no point in it. How many people here use Facebook? Come on. <laughs> See, the exercise earlier worked. Come on. <laughs> wow. OK. How many people here are pissed off if Facebook goes, actually, Twitter is a better example. Here, here's Twitter. Did it, anybody remember the summer last year when Twitter was down like 3 fourths of the time and the fail wheel became a huge internet meme? Yeah, like a couple weeks ago, right. So people get pissed off when they have something that they rely on as a foundation for communication and they get blocked. Um, and because we live in a fairly fast-paced world, we have a lot of multimedia that we try to share. I have a video that I like and I want to share it with somebody, but I'm on a dial-up, so it takes like six hours to do it, or it takes two days to download like a talk that I saw at CCC, right? So Having availability with speed is very important. And that's one of the things we're considering, which has led to some of the choices that we have made in the technology that we're using. Past that, if it's impossible to use, nobody's going to be into it. If you can click a button and make it work, it's amazing, as opposed to having to run a shell script or needing to learn new Unix utilities or anything like that. If you already have the skills built up, great. But most people don't. And we're trying to bring those people together so that we can collaborate and educate them. And uh, everyone can learn from each other. And the easier the tools and the foundation are to use, therefore, the easier it will be to work and build things upon that foundation. And last, we're trying to get, uh, connect our friends together. But if you want to do something with your friends, eventually you're going to do things that you don't want other people to see for any number of reasons. So, one of the reasons behind privacy, there's two things here. One of them, we'll get into things like Tor in a little bit. I didn't want to say too much about that yet. But there, there's a couple things. First, how many people here have worked on something and didn't want anyone else to see it because it was still a work in progress? Anyone? Right. Maybe it's keeping your code repository private because you didn't want it to be released to the world yet. Or maybe you were just, maybe you're too self-critical and you need to get enough peer review before it's released and whatnot. And um, also, encryption is very important. So not just being self-critical and keeping something to yourself until you want to release it to the world, but maybe you do have something that you want to keep people out of, and public key is really important for that, or any kind of PGP, any kind of encryption. How many people here have friends? <laughs> How many people here like talking to their friends? 
The fact that everyone here is in this room and we had this huge line and the Congress is basically sold out except for the day passes and that there's an internet stream broadcasting this to the world, we definitely have a wide global network and we're trying to share ideas with everyone. If we didn't want to learn, we wouldn't be here. If we didn't want to explore and share ideas, we wouldn't be here. And there are more people who couldn't be here and uh, that's kind of what we're doing with the network. So, one of the problems, not just with Twitter and everything else, but when things go down, it's really, really difficult to do anything. Um, has anybody ever tried to take a, a plane trip somewhere and get caught in a snowstorm? How many people, were try how many people ran into tr trouble trying to travel to CCC? Anyone? Yeah, I had a four-hour layover at the airport in Frankfurt, and uh, apparently that was nothing compared to some people getting detained in countries and whatnot. <laughs> So there are a number of reasons to look at speed. Our society is fast-paced. People demand instant answers. If you send a text message to somebody, you want the text message, you want them to respond within a couple minutes, otherwise you freak out. Maybe they're not responding to me, maybe they're, you know, dead. <laughs> yeah, I was dead at the time. Also, we do a lot of sharing, especially with uh, VoIP and Skype type things. If we're trying to send a lot of data back and forth really fast, we need something that's really fast. And it has to, has to be uh, easy to use. Also, this is important for maintenance. It's not just getting people together on it, but if you have problems, they have to be easy to troubleshoot. If you want nodes to come up and go down, if you want people to just uh, join up and leave, if you have to go contact a sys administrator or if you contact the local guru every time you want to do something, then uh, there's kind of no point in it, and it's no fun either. So now that we have this network that we're constructing of all these hacker spaces around the world and other things, we're looking at a number of different institutions, basically anybody who's working on something cool that they want to share with everyone, well, we want to spread the love. So we want to create a giant network and we're looking at the different ways to do it. There are a number of solutions that work and a number that don't, right? So centralization doesn't work because it requires there to be a center point. If that center point goes down, then we're kind of SOL. And it also makes it difficult to keep anonymous if you have to keep reporting. And uh, it makes it difficult to upkeep. So you have things like OpenVPN, which is a very, uh, very good solution for some things, but it's centralized, so it doesn't really work for us. Before I say anything about Tor, uh, is anybody like Jake or Roger in the room? <laughs> I want to say that Tor is a fucking awesome project, and it's very important to preserve privacy and anonymity, and there's a lot of people who depend on it, and I think Tor has even saved lives. So I just want to put that out there before we say why it's not good for our purposes, because Tor is actually really cool. It's a very worthwhile project. However, Tor, the way it works, it's a decentralized network, and when you make a request from, say, point A to point B, it actually hops over, say, 50 different, uh, different nodes as it's trying to reach that point. And every point it does that, it decrypts, uh, or it encrypts and decrypts. So it, the problem with Tor is it's actually very slow. It's very good for privacy and preserving anonymity, but if you're trying to send a whole bunch of data back and forth really fast, it can be kind of laggy. Freenet is a, a very good decentralized solution, but it's primarily used for file sharing. And it's focused on anonymity as well. And while we like anonymity and we want to enable people to be anonymous if they choose, you don't have to be anonymous. And that's actually one of the big distinctions, is trying to create a decentralized network that, while it promotes anonymity, it is, not a, it is not a necessary option. Was this you? No, it's still you. Okay. You should talk about this because I can't remember. This is a, <laughs> yeah, the MRN VPN is a local CCC thing, so McFly knows more about it. The MRN VPN was uh, an open VPN network in server mode. Uh, it worked very well for a while, but after the after a time, the main nodes went down, and as far as I know, it never came up back again, which uh, very good illustrates the problem of why you do want to have a decentralized and easy to administrate environment. And in server mode, simply is not helping us. 
I guess I could pass the uh, conch on to Equinox, who will talk about DN42. One second, sorry. We're just trying to fix the slides because uh, the slides are not ge getting to the next next slide as they do on the Beamer, which kind of is annoying. Perfect. There we go. Yep, you're good. Yay. Right. Okay, so I hope I can keep uh, the pace up um, because these two guys are pretty good at talking. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, what I'm doing here is um, giving you some insight into what has been up for quite some time, um, which is DN42. Um, we, at some point, we started playing around with the technology um, because we just were network freaks and everything, and we just wanted to have our playground for using the, the technology, you know. Um, the big companies don't really like it if you go to them and ask, hey, can I play on your PGP router? Uh, I won't damage it. But, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, um, we used to build point-to-point -point links um, because um, in our mind it, it just was the, the right thing. And um, it gives us quite a lot of advantages, but we'll uh, come to that later. Um, so what we did was we switched everything together with PGP and exchanged our routes and um, let that dynamic routing do its job. Um, with that approach of trying out stuff, um, we arrived by now at around um, 55 people, I think. It's, I didn't really, I, I couldn't count it because sometimes people go off and you don't know if they are gone or if they're coming back, but the numbers should be uh, about right. And of these 55 entities, there's, I think, six spaces. It's at least Dresden, Leipzig, Karlsruhe, Munich, uh, and some more. Um, it's, uh, as you can see, it's German spaces, but, well. And between each of these persons, there is a point-to-point -point tunnel that runs on the BGP protocol to exchange routes. And that looks very, well, funny. That's the current network map. Um, you're not, you're not su supposed to read it, but it's, um, yeah. You can see it is not a full mesh. Um, that's basically by design. Um, we just peer between friends. Um, and basically, if you want to come to the network, uh, the first thing you do is um, you get your network. You register it on the wiki because there's a huge list. Um, it's just to have people not collide on the, on the address and everything. And you grab an autonomous system number, so you have your resources, you have your numbers you need to announce in the network. Basically, um, that's just the consent that is required for the network to function. You need to have the resources that need to be unique. You need to distribute them in a way that no collisions occur. Because if you, you collide on resources, that really sucks. So, you have your numbers. The next thing you do is that you find someone to peer with. Usually you go by your friends. Um, you just ask someone, hey, can I peer with you? And they say, yeah, you can peer with me. Or, well, sometimes they say no because they have other policies or something, but most of, most of the time they will say yes. And if you two agree on the parameters, which is like, what tunneling protocol do you use? Do you use OpenVPN? Do you use IPsec? Do you use whatever? It's, it's your thing. Um, you two have to agree on something, then set it up. The result is quite a nice network because um, it works along the social ties that you have. Because most of you have some friends that you want to share your data, your services with. And you, with, with the N42, you can build your tunnels along these lines and along these, um, well, friendship ties. Um, that has the effect of um, knowing who's, who uh, your data is going to. Because that is, I think, very important. Um, and actually kind of half of the sense of network that you know who you're communica communicating with and that you can trust um, at, at some point at least the network. Um, yeah. I kind of forgot to embed a money-making shame. <laughs> um, the fun thing about this is that it works quite, quite well. Um, the founder actually dropped for half a year, so 
oh, I'm gone. Um, um, nothing really happened because the network doesn't rely on any administration, any central distribution. It just works um, on consent. And if one person leaves, whatever, we don't care. Um, boxes went down, you know, what, what does this box do? I don't know. Let's put it out. Hmm. Damn it, that was my tunnel. Um, your friends will complain to you um, if your tunnel is down. Um, and that actually works better than some status indication or something. Or when you notice, yeah, oh, my tunnel is down. Hmm. I don't care. So your friends will care and your friends will nag you. Hey, get your tunnel up. I want to access your uh, HTTPS or your VoIP gateway or, well, whatever. And in total, it, it, a bit is, um, it's a bit like an IRC network. You know, you have all these servers, and usually the servers decide, hey, yeah, I want to be an IRC server, and then they decide on who they form links with. Um, usually, from these links, the network is born. That's the same as with DN42. Um, DN42, it's just an idea, it's a bunch of numbers, and it really becomes something by the people that are in it. Um, and yeah, it can't really die because um, you would have to remove all the people from it. Um, as long as there are still two routers to, uh, connected together, um, running BGP over a tunnel using DN42 addresses, the network still exists. It, you can't kill it from inside, you can't kill it from outside, you can't neglect it, you, it works. So, and now actually there's a slide missing because there's another slide on what DN42 is not. Um, it's not a lot of things. Um, it is not a darknet because um, you know who, who you are peering with. Um, you don't know who your peers are peering with. So at that point, it becomes a bit of uncertain. But usually, you know who your data is going to, you know who your link is going to, and um, yeah, that's not anonymity yet. So it's not a darknet. It also is not perfect. We have a lot of missing bits. We don't have a DNS. We don't have a who is service you can ask, oh, um, that IP is connecting to my server far too often. Uh, who is that? So you have to go to the wiki, scroll through the list, find it, and yeah, that's not really, um, well, it works, but it could be better. And what it also is not is simple. Um, because if you want to participate in the network, um, you will need um, to get yourself familiar with um, the te technology. You will need to set up software on your own. You will need to get the BGP protocol. And because most people don't really want to do that, um, I'm handing over to uh, McFly who will explain you what Chaos VPN is doing and how they are trying to have everything workable without too much effort. So, McFly. Yeah, hi. Um, so, yeah, some history. Um, Chaos VPN is, I think, from somewhere between 2002 and 2003. Um, it has first been set up by Hager and some people around. Hager is from CCC Hamburg, and it's a pretty old school pe people, pretty old school person here in CCC, I think. Um, it uses Tank. Who of you do know what Tank is? Okay. Who of you, who of you don't know what Tank is? Okay. When you set up tunnels between some networks, you run at some point into a problem. You know, if you have two networks, you need one tunnel. If you have three networks, you need three tunnels, and this goes on that way. Like setting up tunnels, if you want to connect everybody to everybody, scales with O equals N square, which is not good for administration. If you have like 50 networks, have fun. Everybody needs to touch their config files every time any node changes. Um, 
Tink does have one advantage, is that it's a fully meshed VPN. This is very interesting for us because the first use for the KS VPN was to transport KS phone. And if you want to do voice over IP, bandwidth is not the issue, but latency is. And if you want to have the shortest path, you need to have a direct connection. So this is why Tink was used. Uh, Tink is used in some other VPNs. Some of you might have seen the CT, which is kind of a German computer magazine. They had a big article about Tink, I think some five months ago. And Tink has one issue. Um, the config files on the network need to be fairly up to date. Otherwise, you will run into, well, issues, problems, net splits. Uh, some people can, can reach somebody, some others can't, and this is really kind of annoying to debug. So, Hager wrote a Perl script to have uh, an update mechanism who updates all the config files at least once a day. That worked mostly fine. But the problem is, uh, if you want to do routing in your home apartment or in your club, you don't want to waste too much electricity and those gadgets around to do that pretty well are those open WRT routers. And if you want to put Perl on them, that's possible, but you won't have many space left for uh, real things on your box. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of nodes did use like this open WRT routers, but didn't update, the, update their config files, which led to problems. For example, one of those problems can be that somebody knows the route, and as most of you, I suppose, are familiar with routing, the more precise route wins, and somebody announced a slash 32 on the Vermittlung, which is the central phone station, so as this was a dead link, that basically went dead. The problem could be easily solved, just everybody needed to upgrade their configs, but as no poll on the routers, no update script on the routers, no updating of the routers problems. How does this script work? Well, basically, it downloads a configuration file from VPN Hamburg CCCDE, it decodes it, it does some sanity checks, uh, it generates the Tink configs and restarts Tink. That looks very easy to understand. It's way more complicated, in fact, but uh, it had to fit on, on a slide, so this is roughly the outline what it is. <laughs> it does involve some things like certificates and other stuffs, but you don't want to have them here in the slide. So, we said, thought we need to change that, and the main part, which was done by mainly Jens Root sitting over there, and HC. I've seen him somewhere here. Um, and some other people from America, like Sinus and others. Uh, really quick, uh, who are the people that are on the slide that did the work? I know uh, Jens is over there. See Jens some hands? There. No, stand up please, sir. Is Cheryl in the room? <laughs> Any of the other hackers? No, seriously, guys, give these guys a round of applause, because coding's not easy. Okay, they wrote all that stuff into C. Uh, the nice thing with C is that now it does fit on the routers, so we have a chance that people update their TIN configuration, so we have a chance that the whole network configuration just works. Sorry. This is the development of KSVPN at the moment. This is all done. Um, these are the things that we still want to improve. Like, as most of you know, uh, software is never complete. Um, we hope to get some of these things, especially the third bullet point, done on this Congress. But we decided to do the talk first and then made the package stuff. But yeah, the roadmap is to get better authentication, is to have more pull nodes. At the moment, we all pull the config from uh, VPN Hamburg CCC.de. Um, we want to have it directly in the OpenWRT tree, which makes it 
way easier for you to update your stuff. And our goal on the long term is a bit different. Like, you've seen those routers, like the Linksys or the Fonera 2N, right? They have a switch with four, network, four network ports, and this is uh, VLAN capable. So you can do things like, I do want to have my local network on port one. I do want to have the shared hackerspaces network on port two. I do want to have the war zone. We're getting to this later, but this is also one use. The war zone is a capture the flag network, like paint the switch red, so everybody knows what he's doing when he's attaching his computer to that. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we'll find a use for the force port. So this is our long-term goal, and we hope to be able to reach that soon. Back to Tink and the stuff. Current pro uh, projects using Tink is, for example, uh, the Freifunk Intercity links. Some of them work with Tink. Um, they are lacking the automatic update, as well, most of them work with OpenWRT or the special Freifunk firmware, from, which is coming from OpenWRT. Uh, they're having the problems that they are no automated updates, leading to net splits and all those fuck ups you don't want to have in your network. Um, we have the Agora network and the Chaos VPN. Um, before it leads to misunderstanding, the Agora network is the American network, the North American, and the Chaos VPN is the European one. Technically, they are two a just identical network. But we thought it might be a bit complicated if we have a contact person in, let's say, Hamburg for somebody who is out of Kansas City. So for organization issues, we divided that in two in networks. Technically, it's still just one network. Is that clear to everybody? That lead, led to some misunderstandings in before. So this is why I wanted to make it clear. And Warzone um, is, yeah, research network between security research groups. That could include your hackerspace if you want to. Getting closer. Freifunk. Um, we talked about that. Uh, it's the. Who of you have worked with Freifunk? So you possibly have experienced the problem that you at sometimes can reach other, well, out of city nodes and you sometimes you can't. Um, yeah, this is due to Freifunk is usually run on typical Linksys WRT54 something routers. Uh, those have this, the Perl issue and, well, we've, see, we've talked about the, the other things. NetSplit are fairly common there. Um, Agora. Agora is in the North American hackerspace network. We name it, or they name it that way. Uh, it does involve, at the moment, NYC, Resistor, Noisebridge, PS1, CCC, KC, which is, I think, Cowtown Computer Congress, Kansas City. I have no clue how they got on CCC, KC. <laughs> and some other people and more spaces to come. Chaos VPN started in Hamburg and that area around. They are or were links to CCC Cologne and Berlin. Um, it's used to transport Chaos Phone earlier. We want to use it to transport Chaos Phone again. Um, it has an ISC server and some other services like a network. Who of you do not know what Chaos Phone is? Who do we, of those who want to know what Chaos Phone is? <laughs> okay, a CCC does pay for a big server, which runs asterisk, and the main idea was to connect all the CCC things, so every Chaos Treff or Effort Kais has his own phone number or his own phone prefix, so we can all um, have our own phone network running over our VPN. So, for example, in the very... Uh, unlike use case that you want to have a phone call where really nobody can listen outside CCC on it. Like speak some things who, about some things who requires things like trust in the phone network. 
you can use that. <coughs> uh, I sh shouldn't explain who we want to keep out, but yeah. Okay. Uh, I think this is dead again. Okay, use cases. We talked about uh, VoIP. Um, VoIP is one of the main reasons why I use Ting, because VoIP is really picky when it comes to latency. Uh, if you want to phone from Hamburg to Hanover, you would don't want to have a three second latency like going around the globe twice in that time. Um, and every hop where everything needs to be decrypted, encrypted, and again, and again, uh, is adding latency. We want to do media broadcasting, like talks. In Hamburg, we will have a new room soon, and we will have talks every Wednesday. Wednesday. I think some of the hackerspaces in Germany or wherever in that time zone might be interested to have a chance to see them also. So the idea is to put them on the network and have it available to stream down within the network so all the other hackerspaces can see those talks. Uh, we want to make HPC high performance computing accessible. Uh, I think it's still... Yeah, one slide, enough that it's you. We want to make HPC accessible. Like there are hackerspaces who really have big clusters and big computers. And like you can imagine, you just set up a big machine including three graphics computers and OpenCL and it's fucking fast and you calculated some MD5 sums and well, usually after that nothing happens. Like just nobody uses it. Those people in your hackerspace have played around it with too much for their concern or the others just can't reach it, the other hackerspace. So why not make it accessible to all the other hackerspaces? If you build up a very fucking fast computer in New York, why not give the computer the people in all over America or even Europe the possibility to play around with that? And there are more things than just the HPC things. Um, some of them over there want to do something with cloud computing because it's always a good thing that people give the data to you and not to look for it. <laughs> and so we want to have like those internal services like web pages, stuff, or maybe one or another have already noticed that there's a protocol called FTP. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there's the war zones. The war zone is maybe to play capture the flag hacking contests. It's not limited to hacker spaces. We also want this to give this away to university groups and security groups. Um, it's a research platform and a play around platform. And if you plug yourself in there, uh, you just need to know that the common rules of, uh, well, good behavior and internet do not necessarily need to be valid in there. <laughs> so if you ever wanted to have such a network, you possibly should meet us after that, because we do want to have such a network too. Okay, that's the technical part for the Ting. Give this guy a round of applause. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, all right, so uh, the uh, Ubermensch recap. Uh, so, anyway, um, quick show of hands again. I love this game. Who thought this was interesting? This is something they didn't know before or something they're learning about now. Excellent, all right. So anyway, um, as we went over earlier, we had a lot of problems. We want a fast network. We want to have privacy and trust. But a lot of the tools out there don't really work to what we want it to do. So we went out and sought out other groups and uh, found that other things do exist. And things coming around the corner that we're also looking at allow us to expand even further, I mean globally. So, uh, so things to think about, the network is up. We have all the nodes that were talked about up there. They're all online. And we're looking for more. Who's in a hackerspace again? Let's see some hands. Who wants to get on the network? Who, who's not in a hackerspace and wants to get on the network? There we go. OK. So uh, also, um, we said resources, HPC. Um, PS1 has access to a 50 uh, Mac Pro eight-way cluster uh, occasionally. Uh, and we're looking for things to do, not just crack MD5. 
stuff like rendering animations, doing physics calculations, folding, I mean, but stuff that has an actual end goal. There's a, I mean, I work at a laboratory generally, and we do really big number crunching uh, for a lot of things, but it doesn't necessarily apply for the applied. It's more theoretical. There's probably a lot of problems that not everyone here can think about, but people watching on the internet are people thinking about later, have like, hey, I need 20, 20 CPUs for a little while. I don't necessarily want to do it on Amazon, one, because I can't trust where the data's going on EC2, but I think it's really beneficial. So please talk to us. If you have systems that are just not being used, we can set them up for you if you want to share them. We can set up a way where you don't want it used all the time, only a portion of the time. We have a lot of resources, such as uh, spare uh, servers for VMs. We're also looking for more, because we know we're going to hit capacity now since we just announced. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so if anybody has any questions about that, please talk to any of us or go to the sites. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so um, things that were, yes sir, oh yes. There will, be, there will be audio in this microphone. There will be a workshop about all this in... About an hour, I it, it, it was requested for about an hour. The description says DN42, but um, we'll be probably doing your stuff as well. So. Everyone is invited uh, very heartily. <laughs> so those of you who actually do want to connect to that network, uh, I think, think there's so many people that we maybe just drop the lines and write something up after that. Uh, please come to the workshop because this all involves in the beginning some certificate handling and that stuff we didn't explain here because uh, time is not endless. Um, but we possibly need to explain that for the first join and we need to write down your address and all that stuff. Uh, the workshop should be down in A03. Um, please check the Congress wiki for the exact time and location because that stuff tends to change suddenly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so to, to rewrap it up again, um, projects that we're currently working on is Global VoIP, secure Global VoIP to every person who wants it. Right now, we're taking a few people and slowly building, where as Agora is working hand in hand with Chaos VPN to bridge it, right now we have a few spaces up and we're gonna take it up slowly. But eventually, we'd like to scale it up to a few thousand nodes. Uh, we don't know if Tink can handle it, theoretically it can, but we've seen other software that'll allow us to do it a lot better. Um, be interesting to see everyone have an, a point-to-point -point encryption link. Just think about that, everyone in the world. Um, high performance computing, again, to reiterate, if someone has a cluster, anything, and they want to share, please contact us. We'd love to hook up with it. Hey, Eric, just one other thing oh, sure. I wanted to add in. You said that in, in case Tint can't handle things, well, this stuff is all like open as well. So if you want to contribute and maybe add new protocols or add anything that you want to uh, explore and create, totally do it. This is a very open network, and we're experimenting and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you have an idea that you just want to play with and see what others think of it, it's open to that. Thank you, Aesthetics. Yeah, please look at Tink. If you feel you can submit uh, something to make it more robust, submit it to the repository uh, at Tink's site. Please do that. We're looking to expand. We're looking to get everyone in this room somehow on there, not necessarily on within these networks, but using this anyway. Um, again, uh, media multicasting, uh, basically talks at your spaces and whatnot. And uh, capture the flags. Um, so for, again, hands real quick. CTF, who's familiar with it? Okay, who's not familiar with it? Okay, quick explanation. Generally at major conferences like DEF CON, HOPE, 2063, HAR, CCC Camp, um, the cybersecurity, like Net Ninjas, uh, they have an event, they put on a server with vulnerable services and they try to crack into it, get as many points as possible. It's only at the major events. The new VPN we're bringing up is open 24 seven. Anything that connects is fair game. And coming, we, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> they're so anxious. Uh, anyway, so the thing is, uh, our goal is sometime in spring, that we're going to start setting up global weekend capture the flag events. Any site that's on can make a team. We want to see you guys out there. So keep your ears uh, to the ground on this. But uh, other than that, thank you. Thank you for coming. Actually, um, 
everyone check, from check. DN42, um, raise your hand. So guys here, come. Some nervous people yeah. in here. Come raise on. Yeah. Because I this see one way in the back. <laughs> yeah. This thank you actually is for you as well because without you uh, there would be no pre-project and DN42 like was kind of a birth matching for everything and so thank you. Uh, Eric, are you doing questions? Oh yeah, if you guys have any questions, we got a few minutes. We got one in the front. Uh, the guy's coming around the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, what about multicasting in general? Um, I know DN42 I think it's worked on, but uh, especially Tink. Mm -hmm. um, Tink does work with IPv6. Oh, repeat the question. Okay. Uh, the question was if multicasting is working. Uh, Tink does work on IPv6, so mostly it should work. Uh, Tink is fully IPv6 compatible. Will there be some sort of um, service announcement? So if you uh, put up a server to announce it to other people? Yes. Yes. Uh, the question was, if anyone adds services, will we announce it? Absolutely. Uh, we're also going to have DNS on board soon. Uh, domain, I think it was .hack was the domain? Yeah. Yeah, .hack was the domain. Okay. Uh, as most of the people are crowding out, which is fine, as there's a talk very soon, uh, after the last talk's uh, questions, we will answer questions in the workshop area or whenever you see us walking around in this next, in this Congress. So besides that, uh, have a nice Congress. Yep. Oh.